Hello and welcome. We're going to solve this problem together because I couldn't really fit it on the screen nicely, but feel free to pause it at certain times and give it a shot on your own. So first of all, let's just say that what we're dealing with in this problem is called the piecewise function, and that is piece as in like a piece of pizza, right? P-I-E-C-E. -E. This is piecewise, and the reason it's called piecewise is because each piece of the function might have a different rule. And you can see f of x has these two rules here. And I read it from right to left. I notice that when x is less than 1, for all the domain values where x is less than 1, the function looks like the absolute value of x. But when x is greater than or equal to 1, we have the square root of x. Now, we can analyze this kind of quickly because um, if, if, and I'll show you if you don't know what these look like, we can use the graphing calculator. But the absolute value function of x typically looks like a v, right? Like this. That's what it looks like. And if, I ha if you're not convinced, you can make a little table, right? x and then the absolute value of x. Let's call that. That equals f of x. So if you plug in some values, like take negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and plug them into the absolute value of x, what do you get? Well, the absolute value of negative 2 is 2. The absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The absolute value of 0, 0, and then so on and so forth. So these points, notice they're kind of symmetrical. You have negative 2, 2 here, let's say, and then 2, 2 over here, a nice symmetry between these two points, which is why this V-shape happens. Negative 1, 1 here, and then 1, 1 on this side, and 0, 0 right in the middle. So you have this nice symmetry for the absolute value of x, but we're looking for the absolute value of x when our inputs are less than 1. So, so if 1 is here, right, this is when x is 1, we're going to see this part, this red part of the absolute value function. And I see that not in choice 3, not in choice 4, this is for greater than 1, you see the absolute value. I only see it in choices 1 and 2. Then after that, we've got these two different functions, one curving this way, and then one curving up. So which one is it? Well, let's look at the square root of x, because you might not be familiar with that. what that looks like. The square root of x function, let's do a sketch of it first is something like this, right? So first of all, the square root uh, function, you're not going to get any negative outputs here because we're not plugging in negative numbers for x. You can't take the square root of a negative number like negative 4. That would equal 2i. That deals with imaginary numbers. In other words, the square roots of negative numbers don't have real answers, so we're not going to graph, graph them. That's why there's nothing over here. Sometimes I feel like we should be graphing the sideways parabola because, for example, the square root of 4 that could be positive 2 or negative 2. So if, when x is 2, I feel like we should see the point 2, 2, and 2, negative 2, but often we don't see that. Uh, I'm actually not sure why. Sorry about that. But typically we don't include that. We only include the top half, the positive roots. I guess if you saw positive or negative roots explicitly, you can then include that sideways parabola. But if you're not convinced that this graph works, you could try it out. You can plug in x and the square root of x. I would just use home, um, perfect squares, like 0, well, sorry, we're starting at 1. So 1, right, because x is greater than or equal to 1, 4, 9, and 16. The square roots of these numbers are 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if you plot these points, you'll see this shape of the graph, which is why the answer is choice 2. Now, if you want to get a sense of what these things look like on the graph and calculator, you just go to your y equals button, clear off anything you have on there, First, try the square root of x. Second, square root, all right, this is the square root button right here, x. If you go to graph, you'll see that shape right there. Mm -hmm. Then you can also graph the other one side by side. Though I don't, I'm not really sure how to do piecewise functions per se with this calculator, it's not really necessary. I just want to see what the absolute value function looks like. So I go to math, all right, this is the math button. I go over to number, and the first choice is absolute value. So the absolute value of x, plug it in, and graph it. And you'll see that shape right there. And you can even see a table of these values by hitting second graph to see at certain x values what the two functions look like. For me, y1 was the square root of x, and y2 is the absolute value of x. But I can change the intervals if I don't like these halves by hitting plus and then choosing whatever interval I want. I'll go up by ones. So now my x's go up by ones, and I can see what the values of both functions are to really get a nice sense of what this looks like, which is very, very useful if you need to make a graph of this thing. So for example, when x is 9, 
the first function is th uh, the square root function. The output is 3, right? The square root of 9 is 3. And for the absolute value of 9, we get 9. So the point 9, 3 and 9, 9 would appear on both graphs. Of course, we don't include y2 for these values because we're only using the absolute value function when x is less than 1, right? So that would go up on my table and look at x values less than 1, not equal to 1, to see how the absolute value function behaves right here. Sometimes the only other thing to think about is that um, since the absolute value function is not defined at 1, if you were just graphing the absolute value function and not the square root function, if you weren't using that at all, you might draw this line down and go up and draw an open circle at that point right there. That would mean the absolute value gets, goes all the way up to 1 but doesn't include it. All right, I hope this helps.